Naga Accord has been trending for a few days now. This is probably India's oldest insurgency that you can see. It started off in 1918 when the Naga Club was formed. And when the Simon Commission arrived in India in the late 1920s, it's famously said the Nagas told them to leave them alone. In 1946, AZ Fizo, who's also known as the father of the Nagas, formed the Naga National Council. On 14th August 1947, he decided to call for the Naga independence. Naga insurgency thus came with the birth of India as we know on 15th of August 1947. The first breakthrough year was 1975 when AZ Fizo's NNC, the Naga National Council, signed an agreement with the government of India in Shillong. But three big leaders of this, Isaac, Muiwa and Kaplang decided to break away and they formed the NSCN. But even as NNC struck an agreement with the government, NSCN thus formed began the bloody struggle for independence. Again, hundreds of people started dying and Nagaland remained in a state of alarm. It was in 1997 when NSCN decided to sign an agreement deal with the government. It was a landmark deal because it was decided that there will not be any counter-insurgency move by the government and the army against NSCN and in return, they will not indulge in any kind of terrorist activities. Here, Muiwa and Isaac were part of it, but Kaplang decided to step aside. And now NSCN was split in two parts. NSCN IM, which is Isaac and Muiwa, and NSCN K, which is Kaplang. Between 1997 and 2015, there were several rounds of talks with the government of India and NSCN IM but Kaplang Win continued with their terror activities. Over the years, NSC and Kaplang's hold over Nagaland also decreased, with the Naga Ho Ho and the church all coming together and seeking peaceful resolution to this entire problem. NSCM IM became the main center for the talks and later on in 2015, a framework agreement was signed with Prime Minister Narendra Modi, where not only NSC and IM, but several other groups also joined in to ensure that talks can move in the right direction. And the Naga Accord, which we are talking about right now, would be the culmination of all these efforts into a final settlement of the Naga issue. But what are the key demands of the Naga nationalists? The first demand is a separate Naga constitution and Naga flag. A separate constitution would mean that Indian constitution would not be effective. A separate flag would mean that Indian national flag will not be effective or there would be dual flag system. Talks are on that as well. The second demand is of a greater Nagalim, which would mean all the areas of the Naga Hills, whether it's in Manipur, it's in Arunachal Pradesh, in Assam or entire of Nagaland would be brought under the single government. Now this has opposition from the respective states. Manipur doesn't want to part away with its territory, Assam doesn't want to part away with its territory and of course Arunachal too doesn't want to part away with their territory. The reason why the talks are taking so long and a lasting political solution is still so far away probably is because of the border issues which the greater Nagalim demand would face from the other states in the northeastern region. That's why in the last few days of the talks, we've seen protests emerge in Assam, in Arunachal, in Manipur, wherein they say that they will not give an inch of their territory. One of the solutions which have been talked about is of course being autonomous districts, which will be in the Naga dominated areas of all these states. But even then there is a problem. The state government, as well as the various indigenous groups will not be too eager to cede control of these autonomous councils completely to the Naga tribes.